So, what is testing? So, this is just a kind of quick one. We can skip over this, but I was thinking, like, you know, like, how do we go about testing? Like, what is a test? Okay, so, that's a little bit of the, what we're talking about, that search inference, right? Like, he came up with the hypothesis, he tested, and he updated his understanding, right? So, what I wanted to kind of show you is that even in, in naturally, whether you think about it or not, you're kind of doing this already, okay? So, this is one part. Okay, give me some feedback. This is, <laughs> when I talked about the science, I kind of put this in here, but not sure entirely is useful you, but there's actually a lot of different knowledge and testing in science. There's a lot of CS master people and PhDs that kind of come up with these interesting things. But here are four different types of uh, sciences of tests, right? So they're talking about, as you, as you said, Josh, like you can't test everything, right? So the guys kind of came up, that's the problem set. Can't test everything. So what do we do? So these are actually four sort of mathematical theory-wise a way how you can scope down your testing. I just kind of wanted to show you that uh, truth tables, all singles, pairs. I'll go through this really quickly. If you guys want to know more knowledge of it, come back and talk to me afterwards, just because we're sort of limited in time. But I want to show you that there's actually some science behind this wizardry. The idea is, uh, the truth table is the probably the first one. The idea is you, you kind of come through here and you kind of figure out, okay, well, what, 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 what is valid, what's not valid? Let's get rid of the ones that aren't very important or not very likely or something. But the idea is you're trying to draw all this up and this is only has two axes, but in theory you could have multiple ones. But that one, truth tables are usually x, y axis. The idea is like, for example, let's take a life cycle of a device and an application. You know, um, when you open your device, you know, you, you, you know, did you lose it? Did you retire it? This was an MDM type of product. But this is that, that example here. Uh, another one is uh, all singles and all pairs type of testing. I'll kind of show you this one. This is kind of neat. But the idea is like, okay, so we want to we want to test like language, like OS, language, and type. But if we were to multiply all the permutation, that, that'd be kind of a lot. So what you do is you kind of create this table and say, okay, well, what I'll do is I'll test case one, I'll, I'll test Vista, IE, and English, right? And then as you come up, test case five, you're not testing every single combination, but you've at least tested, if I look at this list, I can tell you coverage-wise, I say all the OSs have been covered, all the types have been covered, and all language covered, right? Perfect case scenario, you test every single combination, but like we said, we're not really. So this is an all singles. There's another version, which is called the all pairs which you have even more combinations. This one's kind of cool. Uh, this one actually tells you how many different types of paths you have to have. So this is a lot about path uh, graphing theory and the idea is like, um, so this is, take, look at this flow here. So we have sort of four steps in a final path and we have two choices in each one. So if we were doing the math on this, we want to know how many regions are there and how many complexities. So there's a formula here, you can kind of see it. I'll show you the graphic, it makes much more sense. So the idea is like, this is the true, true case. So I've denoted that as positive. The idea is the first path you go through is a happy path. Come through here, oh, well, that's one path. I have another path here and another path here. And with these three cases, I can cover everything. And that happens to be mathematically supported by the attack. The complexity is here is three. Okay, so I'm not going to go into detail. I'm just showing you that there, there's a little bit kind of skimming the surface. So think about this as more of an ice rink than a well. Okay, it's kind of okay. So that's that, and definitely come up to me afterwards. You kind of want to know a little bit more. I have tons of textbooks on testing and stuff like that. I can explain some of this more theory. But the only thing I'll add to that is that there's probably very good testers out there who aren't PhD in math people as well. <laughs> It's not essential, but some of these things help if you're stuck in a problem, okay? So let's look at the art of testing. So this is the stuff that I was saying is like, I've probably cut my teeth on this a little bit, um, help set up some testing groups or some programs. I'm involved in testing directly with some programs, and these are th things I've tried to pick up. So I'm not giving you, once again, not giving you the SA SAP paradigm, how we test. We have a very vigorous quality assurance process. <laughs> uh, it takes us a very long time to release software for our typical products, but this is gonna be like, general knowledge that I have, okay? So the first one is, like Josh, this is where your plan comes in, okay? You must have a plan, okay? Um, variety, essential, okay? Knowledge is power and be results oriented. So this was sort of a farming algorithm, uh, sorry, a farming illusion I gave as, as in one of the presentations, and it seemed to kind of kick, so hopefully you kind of understand that. That's, that's, so you'll see this farm theme within the next couple of slides, okay? So I could have picked another problem set out there, but I thought this one was kind of cool. So the idea is, you know, be realistic. So, you know, farmers, you know, you, as a farmer, you don't want to sort of lead, 
you don't want to leave not being able to sow your high yield crops, right? You, 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 don't want to, you don't want to be without the right tools. You want to be ill prepared, right? The idea is if pharmacy season come along, you should be ready to kind of go. So, but also an aspect, kind of be realistic, right? Like, you know, you only have so much land, right? So you start to plan any of those kind of things out. So I kind of gave you this one slide. So have you guys seen this? Okay, so the idea that if watermelon is square is it fits in the fridge easily. Watermelons don't necessarily fit in the fridge nicely. So, so in Japan, some guy do the idea of growing watermelons within these uh, glass square cases, right? And uh, in Japan, this watermelon, this square watermelon, sells for eighty-two dollars U.S. I think this is updated. It's about five or six years ago. Idea here is you probably get it from No Frills for like two bucks or the other day. But what I wanted to show you is that these are both watermelons, aren't they? But the idea is, you know, the planning part, putting that seed, growing it within that glass jar. Look at that. You can see the difference here. They're both watermelon plants, right? I'm not even talking like, you know, Monsanto is a super seed versus somebody else. We're talking about seriously, that person planned to do this beforehand, okay? So in the testing world, that means come up with a testing plan, like Josh is saying, aim for high yield tests, uh, prioritize. This is one you're gonna hear me talk about a lot, okay? Prioritize, um, spend time beforehand to set up tests, okay? This is kind of one that, that we learned the hard way. The idea is that you may have a testing phase, but that doesn't mean that you can't set up things beforehand, okay? Um, have an idea of testing coverage. So let's go to the second one. The second one is sort of variety is essential. So what I've been told by my agricultural friends is the idea is like, you know, a lot of times you want rotation to crops. Crops take different type of nutrients from the ground and so on and so forth. If you grow the same crop in the same spot, it's not that actually useful. The idea is you want to have some type of rotation. Okay, so the other thing is, you know, diversity buffers against crop prices. So some farmers, tip, some farmers will sell all the same thing, but other farmers will actually will grow multiple different things. And the idea is that, you know, as the value and goes up and down on a particular yield, it's, you're having some diversity. So in the real case, probably us in portfolios, although I'm not doing so hot in any way I go. But the idea, the idea here is diversity. That's what your financial advisor will tell you is good. And in, in farming, it turns out, it's quite good too. Um, single strain of crops are far more susceptible. The idea here is that, you know, if you have a maybe a particular strain of apples that you're growing and you may get wiped out here. Yeah. So how does that work in the testing world? Kind of the same thing as growing the same crop is don't use always the same test data. Okay? Because the idea is that your test data may be very good, but it will you're testing kind of the same thing over and over again, right? So the idea here is you're only as good as your test as your data. So if you're always using the same data, you've kind of already started to limit your problem set already, or your sphere that you're working on. Um, be willing to try new ideas, get an understanding of all areas of systems, and, and don't just rely on old faithful tests. Because what happens is, in the practical aspect, is that these tests usually have some favorites, okay? I, I'll be honest, okay? Everybody sort of has their favorites. The idea is if, if you're working on the same team all at the same time, generally your coders get very good because they always know that you're going to nail them with this one. But then that means that they're probably spending time on that and not something else, okay? So, third one. So, does anybody kind of know what that thing is up there? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Now, international harvester. So the idea here is you can't really see this in this picture, but they're picking cotton, cotton, right? Like the idea is like uh, cotton was very hard to pick a long, long time ago. It had to be manual. Uh, this whole industry, people industry, I won't get into for political reasons. But the idea is that you know before you spell pick by hand. But the idea is now that somebody invented some technology and away we go, and the world changed. Hopefully for political reasons, but. You know, there's some technology reasons out there. But the idea is here is that knowledge is power. Technology is power. Use that to your advantage. You're in the technology industry, right? Eat your own dog food. Or as I say people, because we call it champagneing because it sounds much nicer. <laughs> <laughs> the idea is here. This experience is a hard teacher. It's a hard teacher because she gives the test first and the lesson afterwards. But the idea here is like learn from experience, right? So other people who've gone through the test, they can teach you type of things. Okay, so what does that world, what does that mean in the testing world? Be aware of development. You know, testers are not on their own little island, if you are a tester. Generally, I like Scrum Model where everybody's a tester, but the idea is here, if you're not, if you're specified in this industry, I still think you should be at least aware of development practices, right? Ask questions, get details. If you're unsure, confirm with others. You know, read the bug reports, right? This one is key, okay? Because what happens is other people are running tests, it's like free knowledge for you. See what's breaking, see what other things are testing. And you can skim a lot of knowledge that people have gone through, right? Humans as a potential, as a society, how we get so much farther is we're, we're built on the last generation. We're, all, we're always adding on our knowledge and our science, right? Use that power here too. 
Other thing is to learn from testing books. A little or boring one. I'm kind of sort of a voracious reader is what people have called me, but you know, sometimes even more than this, they put it in a book and try to make it easy to understand for you. Even better, right? And I, I, I think I'm preaching sort of the choir here because you guys are probably here for that kind of reason. <laughs> Okay, so the last one is here, is uh, be it results oriented. So you reap what you sow, right? Uh, and, and farmers, you know, they have ideas, you know. It's not the whole year's equally important. You know, harvest time, maybe springtime. Those are spikes where they know that that's the priority is to go out the field and harvest things, right? You know, they're not out there playing or, you know, watching movies. There's a priority there, okay? Also, they evaluate quantity versus quality and they harvest efficiently. Okay, good farmers do. <laughs> So, yet another mathematics slide here. But the idea here is fertilizer sells for, this is about, was it six years ago, eight years ago? I, I looked it up and said something, but uh, don't ask me if it's a metric or imperial ton. But the idea is about $11 per ton of cow manure, right? And then at the last time I was looking at this, is a, a cut, cut imperfect warehouse diamond, just the stuff they use just, you know, for just about anything, uh, you know, sanding discs and stuff like that. I think it was $82 per carat, something like that. So what we're doing is, what I wanted to get down is the end result, probably should have made it here. But this diamond, per mass wise, is worth four million, four and a half million times that manure. So we're talking about order of magnitude. Definitely the world, if you, even if you don't do it, the world has a different valuation. They don't value everything identically, okay? So, what does that mean? So, avoid using only default test data. So this is one of the ones that we have kind of standard practice. You know, testing combinations that developers don't have Right? Try to target critical bugs and the main features. Um, I'm going to get into more theory about that later on. Uh, reduce and eliminate redundant test cases. That's where some of that math results come from. Uh, the idea is that, you know, last, this one I'll talk a little bit later, but you only want to generate quality test cases. Like, what's the use of generating a ton of fertilizer? Right? You want to get those diamonds, right? Can yes? Can you give an example of a quality test case versus one that is wasting your time? Uh, it's very domain sort of specific, and we'll kind of talk a little bit about that afterwards. But what I would say is a test case that is written poorly will be executed poorly. So if you have a test case and you just have to meet that requirement, you can say, say, uh, test turning on projector, right? Somebody's going to execute that if it's not necessarily you, or you might have a team, and they turn on the on button and they said, well, fairly vague. Turn on, yeah, good, we're good to go, right? Now, if you have a more specific test case, you say, okay, well, you know, unplug the system, turn everything off, uh, then you're going to get a more specific result, and that result may be higher quality. So that's one example. There's other examples of you know, quality test cases, like, for example, uh, if you're missing steps, if you're incomplete, those type of things. That way, the tester may come back to you if you're the test lead and say, hey, spend the time, then you're spending the time clarifying that. You may be testing something that's sort of incorrect because it's against a previous release or the notes are not updated. The idea is, Better questions, research what you're test you Definitely that stuff, and then also stuff, some of the stuff that Josh said. Like, you know, I can have the world's greatest test case of Epson projector run under truck. But if that never happens, or it's unlikely happen, or I don't care about the result, that's not a good quality test case, too. So there's a little bit of, of, of it's very context driven, but also there's quality in many different aspects. So hopefully, we'll show, show you a little bit more about that. 